Okay, it's difficult trying to get the camera into focus to do this job, so I'm going to try and film as best I can. This is replacing one of these. Okay. The old one, the tang broke off at the back, so it's no longer useless, it needs to be replaced. But doing this, make sure, first off, you get the right, the right replacement one. You know what to look for. Set your tang in, make sure your tang's set, push that out a little bit using a little flat breeder screwdriver. Just give the tang a little push out, make sure that's always set. Get these little push down with your crimp tools, they're brand new, and most of the time they don't need doing it, but it's always just peace of mind if you do. A crimp, a crimp, lovely. Make sure you've got the right crimp tools as well and the right crimping die for the job. Put your tool in and have it set ready. Now when it comes to stripping the wire, so you're stripping the insulation from the wire, you have different methods. Uh, you can use a Stanley blade to cut it off. You have your manuals. So you make sure you use the right size, work big, down, not the other way round, strip it off, otherwise you won't do it right. Same again, the good old wire stripping tool, classic tool, all here. Most people say you use rubbish, but you speak to the old electricians, they actually swear better by the manual strippers than these ones which you can get, which are the automatic ones. You just stick it in there, stick the insulation in there. Pull the lever and it does it itself. Unless you've got a really, really good set of these, they're absolutely useless. These ones actually aren't too bad. Olsen seem to be doing okay for themselves. They aren't too bad. So when you strip the wire, make sure you strip just enough to fit in that second crimp area, just enough for the second crimp area. Be careful when with how much you take off and how many times you get this wrong because if you do it wrong you do take off too much wire it's not going to reach to make the connection anymore. See I know this one if I bug it up to this point here the wire's not exactly going to meet if I put the connector here it's not exactly going to meet so be careful how many times you get this wrong. Thankfully this one You've got a few lives on this one. So it just comes straight out and then reroutes back to another one. Back to another point there. So we, we can use pretty much almost all of this. And also because I've got access to lots of these and all the wire, etc, etc. I can even just rebuild it completely if I so ever have to. But if we try and do it this way, it's a lot quicker, a lot easier, a lot cheaper for the customer. So you want to feed it in there and always test it. Make sure it fits right in there. You want it to fit just there perfectly. Unfortunately, it's not always as easy to do due to the fact that when you've got it in the crimp tool, you can't always see how much it's in there by. And you can't always feed it through like that. Sometimes you get a copper spray off. But you want to try and get... I can get that off. You're looking to have the contact right just at the end of the tank. You don't want too much sticking out. And then once you feel it's about right, crimp it down. At the last minute, you can make a little final adjustment. But I'd say there, we're going to go for that. So, crimping. That's so. Now I'm going to back off here because I think I've actually used the wrong die so we'll back to the normal die and give it the crimp and reset I probably didn't have actually the right die for that there's another die I can use I thought this was the right one if you get it right there you go 
crimp it down. That is the right one. Be careful when you do these. Take great care when doing it because sometimes the crimp doesn't always go very pretty. On that one, it's okay. It's not too bad. We've got away with it there. We've actually done pretty well because as you can see, it's all been crimped. The back end of the wire is crimped there. This is to crimp the back end of the wire. It's all done. It's not too bad. The better your quality of crimp tool, the better the dye, the better this is. But always make sure that the whole part of it's crimped. There we go. Every bit of it. Once that's been done, tub test. Give it a nice tub test. Make sure it's not going anywhere. There we go. You see your tang. I've already done all this. Visually, always check it. Make sure that crimp is as crimped as you can get it. Without overdoing it. You can probably hear my other set would have gone into hand, but. It's done it perfectly nonetheless, that's absolutely fine. It's fully crimped, there we go, I'm happy with that. And we're ready to go. Before it does go back in, actually, once want to grease it up. This is where I say, the more less sticking out of that back end, the better. Because it means less open to corrosion. There we go, stick it in the soap. Clean the area that's going to make the contact. Just like that. Now about there. And then return it to its rightful place. See, take the area out. No, uh, goes in the middle one. I remember this. I took my notes and my pictures. I just got to feed it back in now. If we can get it back in, there we go. And dush already all replaced. And there you go.